For this final video, I want to talk about the characteristics of an effective online learning course. Let's get started. A few years ago, I was asked to train some online teachers about how to design an online learning course. And as I reflected on what was needed, I came up with these four C's of an effective online course. This is my own thoughts. This is, there are many other things that will make for a good course. But these were the four things that I felt like were very important for a course. So I'm going to look at these things with you. Communication, content, consistency, and community. Now, for each of these characteristics, I want to define the characteristic, tell you why I feel it's important, give you some recommendations on how to accomplish it, and then tell you methods that you can use in its learning for this. So let's start with communication. Now, by definition, communication is literally the act or process of using words, sounds, signs, or behaviors to express information or ideas to other people. Notice two key words in that definition, behaviors and feelings. That's pretty hard to do on online courses. But yet the definition also says it's a way of sending information to people by using technology. So it is possible. It's just more difficult in an online course because you're really depending a lot on words and how people read words vary from person to person. So you need to somehow figure out how to get that emotion and those feelings across through those words. Now, I highly recommend that you use as much video as possible within an online course. Um, this may not be um, easy at all times, but because of that online recorder within its learning, you can do it. Um, I highly recommend that you post announcements, do um, jokes, do anything that will help you connect to your students. Weekly messages to your students is also a great way to just keep in touch with them and help them know that you're there. In its learning, the messaging system, the planner, and your announcements. Those are your three key features that you can use to communicate with your students. Now, the second characteristic is content. And by definition, content is the matter that you're dealing with for the subject. So it's truly what you're teaching to your students. Obviously, this is important because this is what you're trying to get the students to learn. And the way you deliver that material and provide that interaction with your students helps them in their understanding of it. When you put your content into your course, you need to use variety. Um, none of us like to do the same thing over and over and over again. And keep that in mind with your students as well. You don't do the exact same thing every day in your class. You might have a routine, but you vary it up a little bit. But think the same thing when you're doing an online course. Use variety. Make sure you do things that are interactive. Don't just have them sitting there reading or watching things, but actually have them submitting things, creating things. What's very important is the details in your directions and in your instruction. It's really hard sometimes for students to know exactly what you are asking them to do if you don't have the details there. Um, in the class, very easy for them to ask you, hey, can you tell me what you want here or give you more explanation on this? Um, but when they're online, they may not default to those questions right, right away. So the content needs to be very detailed. Now, when you're doing this and it's learning, all of those different types of activities and resources become very important. Mix it up, use assignments, use discussions, embed videos, embed outside websites, use a page, use a task, use a test. Um, go through and just do a variety of, of those instead of the same thing every day. For the third characteristic, I have consistency. Now in content, I talked about adding variety and that is important, but at the same time, it's important to be consistent with how you post things, where students find things. Um, the definition of a consistency is agreement and harmony in parts. There is a bit of comfort that comes for each of us when things happen in the same routine or happen in the same manner. 
just like in your classroom, you set up the normal routine. The students know the schedule. They know where to go to find certain things in your classroom. And you need to do the same thing in an online course. Make sure that you're posting on the planner the same way every time. Make sure you're organizing your tree in an easy way for them to find things. Um, notice on this page, I've color coded things on the page. Definitions always with a blue box. Why is, why is it important is always the red box. Come up with something that helps you provide that structure for your students. Some of the recommendations I have there is post your syllabus, have a checklist, um, put your folders in order, make sure that your folders are relatively the same length in time, maybe within the folders, put the exact same subfolders, create pages in a similar layout. I know that a lot of you on online learning days, um, you had pages that were, had a welcome block and then had your dream box and then maybe had your um, reading block. So come up with some kind of consistency that's going to really help your students. Within its learning, the planner order that we've already set up with you, that's going to help a lot. Um, you creating your own order within the tree and color coding. Those are all great ways for you to build that consistency. And the last characteristic is community. Community is an interacting population of various kinds of individuals. It's a group of people with common characteristics or interests, whether that's fourth graders or biology. Your class is a community, and you're used to building that community within your classroom. But when you have to do that online, it does take a lot more work. But yet, it's so important because it's what makes the students feel included and connected. When you're doing an online course, Consider doing discussions, assignments, have the students work interactively on documents. You may have to start slow. This may be something that some students are not comfortable with, um, but work together. Help build that as much as possible. Once again, bring your videos in as much as you can so that they see you, and then have class meetings so that they can see one another. The different tools in its learning that you can use are any Google collaboration items, discussions, messages, surveys, videos, and allow students to create and submit content that they share with one another. At this point, we don't know what the 2020-2021 school year will look like, but I hope that through these videos, you've learned a lot about online teaching and you feel more comfortable about the possibility of teaching online. I hope that we all have a successful school year, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me.